Welcome once again to the STEER series of videos by Dr. Amdekar's team. I am Dr. Tushar Maniar and I'll be talking today on arthritis mimics. What do you mean by arthritis? Once we understand that, it will be easier to find out how and when to suspect and confirm that this is not arthritis. Whenever there is a joint lesion leading to swelling, pain, warmth, and redness with re restriction of movements, one would think of it as arthritis. So, what does what other conditions can mimic as arthritis? It could be a mechanical problem like hypermobility related problems. Also, conditions like patellofemoral pain syndrome, wherein excessive runner's activity can lead to pain in and around the kneecap and swelling, or it could be because of some periarticular tissues which are involved and which we may mistake and mistake is at arthritis. So, we will look at one by one. For tendon problems, you could have tendonitis which could be because of crystal deposition or because of inflammation of the tendons or insertion, injury at the site of insertion. There could be nursemaid's bursitis. There could be other causes of chronic irritation or pressure related bursitis. Then let us not forget that bones are part and parcel of the arthritis problem and hence bone could be involved because of an infection, because of infarction, because of a periosteal injury or because of infiltration of the bone marrow by malignancy or metastasis. There could be also a malignancy of the bone itself closer to the joint and we would think of it as arthritis. We know that muscle pain can point towards the nearby joint and so conditions like dermatomyositis or myositis which is post viral can also cause confusion. There could be calcification in the subcutaneous tissue and that could cause swell, look like a swelling pain over the joint area. We also have rarely conditions like scleroderma, where there is thickening of the skin over the joint and restriction of movement, thereby causing the confusion of arthritis, which in real case is not. We must remember that Psychogenic causes like pain amplification syndrome or conversion reactions can also present as mimics of the joint. To give you another perspective, let us look at system wise conditions which can be responsible for situation which look like arthritis. So classically orthopedic problems like Perthes disease that is avascular necrosis of the femoral head can present with limp and pain and thereby thinking of a joint like a hip arthritis. Problems with diagnosing hip arthritis is that the hip joint is not visible like, an, like a knee joint or an ankle joint. So, assessing the swelling, redness etc. is difficult and one is well left with pain and restriction of movement as a way of diagnosing or ruling out arthritis. Similarly, an obese child could present with pain and limp and it could be, sub could be a slipped capital femoral epiphysis. Also, orthopedic conditions like causing dis uh, developmental dysplasia of the hip joint can present with, uh, uh, present with limitation of the hip movement as well as limp and thereby one would be thinking in terms of some arthritis problems. Musculoskeletal conditions like myositis which is classically seen with viral post viral myositis can be confused with chikungunya arthritis and hence it is important to make sure that there is tenderness of the muscle and the joint range of movements at the joint is not affected. You have conditions like rickets in which there could be bowing of the bone or could be any epiphyseal injury and thereby causing pain and swelling of the joint. We have another deficiency disorder 
which is scurvy, not as common as rickets nowadays, but can present with subperiostial hemorrhage as well as swelling of the soft tissue and also because of extreme pain causes what is called pseudo paralysis and that could be confused with a knee joint arthritis where the treatment is simple as giving supplementation with vitamin C. We have conditions like congenital problems like skeletal dysplasias as it, which can present with joint swellings and one would be confused with something with a polyarticular JIA. We must remember that several infections can present like osteomyelitis, myositis, cellulitis present as, as arthritis mimics. The most concerning differential diagnosis is definitely leukemia and we all have heard that enough number of children with leukemia present in a rheumatology clinic. So our eyes and ears must be open to this possibility so that we don't make a mistake of missing an ALL and starting them on immunosuppression. Also in cases of sub, uh, say spastic cerebral palsy, there could be contractures, there could be adductor spasm and limited movement of the hip joint with pain in the hip and one would tend to think of it as arthritis. So now that we have addressed what are the different types of conditions which can mimic, let us think when will you suspect that this may not be arthritis and it could be something different. So classically, if there is a pain which is bone pain or it is a pain in the night time, then one would think in terms of non-arthritic pain. Also, if there is symmetry of the joint, it actually favors arthritis. But if you have all the joints involved, say all fingers, all toes, then definitely you would think in terms of skeletal dysplasia or spondyloarthropathy which can present or conditions like mucopolysaccharidosis with joint deformities can present as, a, a, can look like arthritis and that should be a red flag for you. Any condition which is present since birth, one would think more in terms of non-arthritis problem. Also, if there is a family history of a similar condition, then also one would think about it as not being arthritis. And finally, most important, a child who is looking very sick, weight loss, fever, one must think of conditions except for systemic onset JIA and some other rheumatological problems. Always think about ruling out malignancy in this condition. If there is a family history of hemophilia or a bleeding disorder, or a repeated blood transfusion requirement, then one would think in terms of bleeding as a one of the causes. Now, how do we differentiate a joint problem from a non-joint problem? So, most important being the pain is usually throughout the joint movement. The pain is there during active as well as passive movement, where in case of arthritis, if the, there is a point tenderness, if the pain is only in one direction of the movement, if the pain is not very severe, if the weight bearing is preserved, these are the points which may go against arthritis. Also, the concept of joint line should be considered. So, wherever the point tenderness is outside the joint line, then one would think about it as non-arthritis problem. Also, you remember that if there is no morning stiffness, if there is no gelling phenomena, if the pain is more during or after use of the joint, one would think in terms of mechanical problem rather than otherwise. Of course, we have discussed that the systemic signs have to be checked, a developmental history should be examined and family history and past treatment history should be looked at. Having said that, if you see no warmth, if you see no redness, one would be tempted to make a diagnosis of arthralgia and leave it alone. But we must remember that arthralgia could be the beginning of arthritis and hence these children should not be 
passed away as normal but should be kept under a under close watch so friends remember not to forget that arthralgia can lead to arthritis and remember some common conditions especially the dangerous ones like acute leukem leukemia or neuroblastoma or certain bone tumors which can mimic as arthritis and so can some reasonably benign conditions like hypermobility or conditions like sickle cell <coughs> sorry conditions like sickle cell avascular necrosis slipped capital femoral epiphysis which have completely different treatment and management to not only prevent progression but avoid further damage to the joint so let me end this by saying that not arthr not all arthritis pain and not all paining joints are arthritis so it's worthwhile taking the pains to differentiate arthritis from arthritis mimics thank you very much for the patient hearing